I'm George from Ireland. So this video is about um, uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson, that um, uh, American judge, and um, she's been nominated by President Joe Biden to the United States Supreme Court. It remains to be seen whether she'll be confirmed by the US Senate. It's probable that she will, that they usually are. Um, anyway, she's notable for a number of things. She's the first African-American woman to be nominated to that court. And she's getting a fairly rough ride from Republican senators. Um, you might not be familiar with the, the situation. So according to the US, Congre uh, US Constitution, uh, the president nominates people to the court and their senatorial hearings and the Senate can confirm or disconfirm this, um, uh, this appointment so that they could block her permanently. But as I say, that, that seldom uh, transpires. So, um, yeah, well, what, what else about her? Not too much about her bio data. I mean, she um, uh, was born in Washington, D.C. She grew up, grew up in Florida. Both her parents were teachers and her father later qualified as a lawyer. Um, so she went to a public school, as in not a fee paying school. And then she went on to Harvard in, in 1988 when there were very few African-American students there. It was overwhelmingly white, Harvard at the time. There are plenty of Asian students these days. Um, and um, yeah, they, they mostly went to prep schools and fee paying schools. So she was not as privileged as, as many of those who were, who were attending uh, that university. And um, she said, or she felt well, dejected, bewildered, disoriented, um, ectopic, but uh, an African-American woman said to her persevere because she was asked during these hearings, can you think of a difficult moment in your life and um, how you got through that? Anyway, she did. Um, so she clerked for some judges and she rose up the, rose up the ranks of the judiciary. She'd been a federal judge for just a couple of years, which is one of the things that's a little bit contentious about her. Biden said he was going to appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court. Someone said that was wrong. Why did you rule out the majority of Americans? You know, 50% of Americans are male. They won't even be considered. Um, and, uh, you know, only about 12% of, of, of um, um, women in the United States are African-American, so, you know, 88% of women can't even be considered, you know, and about 6% of the US population can't even be considered. Um, now, I mean, I, I think people should be colorblind, it really doesn't matter, um, so, but uh, it doesn't, wouldn't be terribly much if a white male's not appointed, not that I'm American, but I mean, uh, I, I'm white, and in these transgender times, I hope it's not too offensive to say I'm male, it's cisgender. But anyway, of all the people who've ever been appointed to the US Supreme Court, about 98% have been white males. So I don't think it would hurt to, promote, to appoint someone who's neither. Um, anyway, so what she got a hard time for in the US Supreme Court? Well, supposedly her sentencing, the certain sentencing guidelines, and particularly with regard to child pornography cases, where they say that um, she was um, unduly lenient and that she should have thrown the book at them. And um, uh, who is it? Um, Lindsey Graham in particular. That senator, he led the charge saying she just gave a few years and she should have given 50 years. But actually I respect her more because um, she's um, uh, not been a populist. She's done what she considered just and the judge should be putting that out of her mind popular or unpopular. I don't care. I'm insulated from public opinion. I'm going to do the right thing. And the right thing and the popular thing are not always um, the same. And the trouble is you get a cumulative radicalization in sentencing. Well, I'm going to be the toughest judge and give longer sentences. Someone goes even a longer one than that and someone tries to outdo them and be even tougher than that. And someone else should be out with them and be tougher than that. And it becomes uh, grossly punitive. There can becomes this there starts to be a fixation with punishment, just incarcerating people for decades for the most um, trifling misdeeds. Not that this is a mere misdemeanor, but no one should get 50 years for looking at an image, no matter what that image is, or even many, many images. And, and they, okay, they could get some custodial sentence, but not decades, because it's unjust. Um, and moreover, it's a waste of taxpayers' money. I mean, funny those who, who are demanding that the taxpayers pay huge amounts of money are those who, who tend to be, believe in, in low taxation, call themselves um, fiscal conservatives. And there are also sort of other rulings she's made which are contentious, but that, that's, in, that's in the nature of things. You know, there are obviously two sides to any court case. One of them is going to lose, and because they've lost that trial, they feel aggrieved, they'll say, oh, it's unjust or something like that. So you can't keep everybody happy. They can't both win. They're out of court settlements, which is not quite a win for both, but it's not such a bad loss 
or one of the sides. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, is that better, what they have, than, say, what we have, like, in the Republic of Ireland or the UK, where there are no such hearings? We always tell ourselves, and the British Isles, our judiciary is independent um, and fair, but, like, how do we know? We just are, we're just asked to take that on trust. There's no empirical evidence that's that's the case. And um, how do we know they're not politically biased? We actually don't know what their opinions are. Um, they're, they're very much discouraged from disclosing them. It's not the done thing to talk about um, uh, controversial issues for them. So they could be self-interested. I mean, they could be all left-wingers or all right-wingers or whatever, or all environmentalists or all anti-environmentalists. Probably not all anything, but like mo mostly. Um, and um, so they have opinions too. And obviously, the, the legal profession tends to attract those who are gifted in humanities, which um, tends to correlate with certain personality traits and so forth. And there can be group think, there can be a certain mindset inculcated, um, and you can only qualify in the profession if you uh, profess certain pieties and so forth, and you might end up believing them. So maybe it's a better system in the United States where it's all candid and there's full disclosure. Uh, and uh, but, but perhaps it's bad that it politicizes the judiciary um, and uh, judges are less willing to make just though unpopular decisions. One of the good things obviously in the US Supreme Court is that they cannot be removed nor can their salaries be, uh, be reduced. They can stay there for life. They may retire if they wish to, however you can stay till the day you drop. There is no retirement age. The Chief Justice William Rehnquist around about 2005, I remember him re-inaugurating President George W. Bush in 2005. He knew he was terminally ill. He was sounded like Darth Vader, had this very labored breathing. Um, and he decided that he would carry on until the very end. He declined to retire, decided he would die in office, as indeed he did. I think he, he succumbed to cancer. So this um, a judge, um, uh, Brown, Katanji Brown Jackson. She's also got an indigenous African name. Her parents said, we're not going to choose these so-called white names, biblical names, saints names, or whatever. Names from Norse mythology, Greek mythology, and so forth. Um, we will um, select something um, of Bantu origin because that's where our ancestry is. We were deracinated. Our, our, our heritage was, was uh, stripped from us, but we're going to uh, restore that to her, as indeed um, they have. So um, I thought she bore herself with, with um, uh, dignity. Yeah, she comported herself with much decorum in this difficult situation. It was a grueling grilling of many hours in front of the Senate Judiciary um, uh, Committee. Um, and that's what you have to go in for. And it was uh, fairly emotive at times. But uh, they was trying to say that um, she was feeble, that she uh, went too easy on, on felons and so on. So um, I think... Um, being uh, m more reasonable. I think it not, not sending people down for such incredibly long times is a better thing. I mean, I'm not against imprisoning people, but I think prisons for dangerous people, and I know some people really are dangerous, and, and uh, tr obviously try and rehabilitate people. I'm not so naive or starry-eyed as to think that um, you can turn every evil person into a good person. Uh, right, that's enough from me, and I uh, look forward to um, Judge uh, Brown Jackson being appointed to the Supreme Court bench. Oh, well, you'll be in Dublin next month. That's nice to know.